If a plane lands here, it will never take off again. We're standing in the middle of the largest airplane scrapyard in Europe. Nothing rusty lasts forever, because among the wrecks, there are true hidden treasures. Within eight weeks, we can have a plane, as soon as it lands, stripped right down to nothing. Aircraft mechanic Ellis dissembles the scrap parts, while sales chief James sells them back to the airlines. These are all to make sure that if the aircraft is needed tomorrow, it can fly tomorrow straight into service, so... Really? It still looks like an airplane cemetery here. Cotswold Airport in the south of England is the treasure trove of the company Air Salvage International. Each year, the team disassembles 60 planes from around the world. On average, about 92% will get reused or recycled um, through the parts being removed at the beginning of a process where they go back to either an airline, a broker, or an MRO. Even used turbines end up installed in brand new holiday planes. At first, the idea might make you a bit jumpy. But we'll see in a test just how safe the scrap engines really are. Many well-known airlines trust in the work of James and his crew. Their used parts also have a clear advantage. Yeah, so the, the advantage of using serviceable parts, basically this will save an airline hundreds of thousands of dollars by buying a serviceable unit rather than a brand new unit from an OEM. One thing is clear. This is an amazing deal for the airlines. But how safe are the serviceable parts? Aircraft mechanic Ellis has years of experience in dismantling planes. He knows how to deal with the world's most expensive scrap parts. He dismantles one of the most inconspicuous but vital parts very carefully. This will probably be to do with the communication between other aeroplanes, maybe. Try to keep all bolts with the product itself. If the antenna fails, a collision with another plane becomes likely. Even such a vital aircraft component ends up in the junkyard. For their job, the plane dismantlers often get into dangerous situations. Ellis has to climb into this tank today. There are poisonous liquids that can easily drip into his eyes. We've all the guys around here have a bottle of this extra virgin oil, which a small drop of that into your eye will release that pressure of pain straight away. It almost sort of lacquers your eye, and pushes the sky drawn away from it, which takes the pain away instantly. It can be quite claustrophobic in there. Scrap components that end up on our vacation planes. Ellis works in the most extreme conditions, such as this narrow, dark and stuffy hole. This is the main centre tank, where the fuel will be, and then you have the wing tanks either side. What I'm going to remove now is the fuel probe, which indicates the level of fuel left in the tank. And if that doesn't work, the pilot doesn't know how much fuel he has left. Incidentally, we can also find these fuel probes in car tanks. It's a part that mustn't go missing under any circumstances. It can be just having a bit of a think before you do anything. Keep your eyes open, vision on everybody else you're working with, and generally make sure that you've got safety precautions in place. Ellis and his colleagues work under great pressure on several machines at the same time. There's a demand for the most varied array of parts. It's the same principle as in a normal junkyard. A 777 still needs to be completely dismantled today. It's considered one of the safest, most robust planes in the world. The consequence is that very few of them are ready for being turned into scrap. There are the toilet tanks, not touching them. And then uh, I come down and went to remove them and they went everywhere. Mate. Oh. And I had to go back outside oh. and I emptied the other two. 
And because he'd already claimed it, I just did him for free. Oh. The time has come for that 777. But how safe are serviceable parts? More on that later. First, Ellis and his team secure one of the most important parts of the aircraft, the turbine fan. Without it, any plane would overheat. Isn't it dangerous to secure it just with a piece of wood? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should have a proper gag in place to hold the TRs up. But he's going to be in there for probably five, ten minutes and back out again. Patch up work on a part that keeps us all in the air. These weigh a lot. I don't know exactly how much, but I know I wouldn't want to be holding it on my own. So the issue we've got at the moment is this lift is too big to drive in. So what we're thinking of doing is actually opening the TRs even more to see if we can bring the lift further in. To be fair, I've never seen this break. Ellis's plan. He pulls the iron turbine cover with his forklift and then his colleague Sid will use a new wooden beam. The work is back-breaking. They're not experts, but handymen. Ellis is a trained landscape gardener. The engineers take care of the quality control later. Uh, forward. Forward. saying about never breaking. I've never seen one break. You just broke that one. The broken strap is the smallest of their problems. What now? Get another strap. And the fan? Jesus, that went right through, did it? Yeah, I know it went through, yeah. Oh, it was okay. like the actuator was. Uh, well, because when it went back up, there was nothing on the stops. In there. That was lucky. You have to go slow. Help. If the fan breaks, it costs several thousand dollars. Come back slowly. The plan works. In contrast to other spur parts, the fan, with its weight of a whopping 176 pounds, is very hard to remove. Together, Sid and Ellis recover the last big piece of treasure in the 777. The interior of the aircraft has now been completely stripped. Doors, seats, seat belts, luggage racks, ventilation systems and lights have already been sold. And once it's just like that, all the way through the whole plane, the machine will then start crushing. 25 years ago, this was a regular workshop for small propeller planes. Then, a large airline phoned in. Their problem? They were looking for a rare spare part. The solution? The workshop buys the whole plane and sells the two desired spare parts for the price of the entire aircraft. A brilliant business idea. Back in the aircraft hangar, we find something that calms our nerves. The aircraft parts are catalogued here, examined several times, and their condition is recorded in detail. Whether turbine or antenna, the same rules apply to every part. To make sure nothing goes wrong here, Sean photographs and labels everything and makes sure that no part has any cracks or dents. In case something gets lost or they just need to check the part that's why we take photos in case anything gets damaged so obviously we got something we can look back on and say it wasn't damaged here um, it must have been damaged elsewhere the plane wreckers know exactly how many hours each scrap part was in operation the airlines test each item again before it can be installed in an active aircraft these will obviously have to go to shop. Um, a lot of it can depend on 
uh, the date manufactured. This one was 2003, um, so it's only about sort of 15 years old, so it's still in good condition in terms of age. Even 15-year-old emergency slides are still as good as new. Under the Aviation Act, however, they must be tested every three years. If they pass the tests, they can be used for decades to come. Easily 30 to 40 percent may be serviceable that have gone through a shop at some point. But not all parts may be installed in new planes. So over here we'll have things like quarantine parts. This one is come back off, if you can see from this side, there's damage there. We've obviously advised the customer of the damage that was already on there when we took it off and it's then their decision how they want us to proceed with it. Nothing that could potentially break ends up in a new passenger aircraft. The crazy thing is that James can still make a profit with the discarded parts. Um, we supply um, films like Star Wars, um, the Doctor Who series. Um, they come in and sometimes take parts. You know, all this stuff here is very much either expired um, shelf life or they belong off aircraft that no longer fly. So it's not going to be put back into the market for, to go onto other aircraft. Each part is treated with the same care, but James separates severely broken scrap pieces from valuable spare parts, theoretically at least. The sales manager wants to prove that to us and takes us to a turbine test. And then after that, just carry on with the seven day check okay. and then we've got the engine runs. Together with his most experienced engineers, James tests the engines of a scrap airliner on a new machine. Some of the LLP parts are worth tens of thousands of pounds. Um, the whole asset is itself is worth, you know, millions of dollars. Um, so certainly the, the big proportion, 89% of the value would be within, a, within an engine. Only the bosses themselves are allowed to work on the engines. The condition of the turbine is thoroughly inspected. Is it still working? If it is, it means a lot to James. We're currently parked outside H1 and we're going to carry out a low power ground run on the A320 duration, possibly five minutes. Hydraulic pressure, hydraulic pressure, hydraulic pressure. Will the engine start? The exhaust gas temperature is in the green range. The speed, adequate. Ventilation, perfect. The ignition system, OK. Time to start the engines. And indeed, all values are right. Now, James and his team know that millions of dollars are churning in front of them. Perfectly safe. Yep, yeah, it's in a flight-ready status. That's what these checks are for. Um, when it's under a storage and maintenance program, we have the seven day, 14 day, 30 day checks. So these are all to make sure that if the aircraft is needed tomorrow, it can fly tomorrow straight into service. So absolutely 100% fine to fly. Okay. The engineers made it. The valuable heart of an old plane may now start a new life with many other used parts. Even if the second-hand parts are already millions of miles into their service life, we can rest assured that the scrap in our vacation flights is meticulously tested and is super safe.